the future, the promise of the future. With a little imagination, it's easy to see how the future is exploding with possibilities. The potential for a better way to work. The future promises powerful technology. Technology that simplifies process, that illuminates with insights, that frees us from disruptions, and enables us all to do our best work. It's technology that gets out of your way rather than in your way, that puts everything you need in one place, every place you happen to be. It's technology that powers up your potential while locking down your information, that serves up what you need before you know you need it, and wraps a layer of security around your apps and content wherever they may be. It's technology that favors flexibility over force lock-in and is fluid to change as your needs change. It's a productivity multiplier, a business accelerator, a game changer. It's a seamless experience with enterprise-grade security and unlimited choice that will transform work. It is the future, and the future starts right now. Welcome to Citrix Synergy. Please welcome President and CEO, David Henshaw. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to Synergy 2019. This is gonna be a really, really cool week. Welcome to the thousands of you that are joining us here live in Atlanta and the many thousands joining us virtually from around the world. I'll tell you, from my perspective, it's really good to see everybody again. Before we get started, though, one more shout out for Sonequa Martin-Green from CBS's Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> and AMC's The Walking Dead, a really cool way to start off the show. You'll see more of Sonequa later. So I want to extend a very special thank you to everyone for helping shape Citrix and really our vision for the future of work. Thank you to our team and our go-to-market partners for your focus on customer success. To our industry partners and our sponsors for making sure that Synergy is an amazing event this year. To all the press and analysts that are here with us today and our Citrix CTPs, where are you guys? Right there. Thank you for your energy and your support. And most importantly though, thank you to our customers. Your success is what inspires us and really the most important part of everything we do. So I'll tell you, for me, it's hard to imagine that it's been a full year since I was up here last talking about all the transformation that's going on inside of the company right now. And from my point of view, the momentum is just incredible right now. In fact, product delivery has never been faster than it is right now. And just take a look behind me at all these new foundational announcements that we made, frankly, on this stage a year ago. And we delivered in the weeks thereafter across areas like the workspace, across networking, and across analytics. But clearly, that's not everything. We, you know, we've taken it another step forward, really investing along our great ecosystem partners to make sure that all of our technologies are really tightly coupled so that you can have the best experience across the infrastructure of your choice. So all in, I'd say a really productive 12 months. But the focus right now is about looking forward, talking about everything that's going on around us and all these business forces that are shaping our companies right now, and certainly the things that are influencing the roadmap of solutions we're delivering forward. And so, you know, when I take a, a little bit of a step back, I'd say, you know, this is an amazing time for our industry, and frankly, you know, for the world in general. You know, the future is coming at us so fast from all these different dimensions, and, you know, people are more connected now than they've ever been. Half the world's planet right now and growing every day. But it's really not just people, though. It's devices and things at the same time, you know. It's estimated that there's going to be 65 billion interconnected devices around the world in just the next couple of years. That's eight for every single person on the planet. And all of the data being produced by that, all of the people, the devices, the things, is really staggering, frankly. We're rapidly approaching what is being called the Yodabyte era. 
Don't bother Googling it, just trust me for a minute. That's one with 24 zeros after it. Staggering. And when first contemplated, they were saying that it was gonna take a data center the size of Delaware and Rhode Island together just to house it all. Obviously those estimates are coming down pretty rapidly, but it's a lot of data, any way you look at it. And it's certainly more than people can use in any meaningful way. So of course, new capabilities like machine learning, artificial intelligence, and others are really coming to help us turn all this data into information. Because I think in the future, those businesses that have really uh, relied on access to proprietary information, that kind of differential advantage is going to erode over time. And the most successful companies are the ones that can really capture information on demand and use it most efficiently going forward. So fortunately, compute is also really, really driving forward, and you're seeing this advance at an amazing pace. And new capabilities like quantum computing are moving rapidly from science fiction to reality as companies and nations are spending tens of billions of dollars to advance this in just the next couple of years. And it promises to be the single biggest leap in compute that we've ever seen in the history of the industry. What I think is actually a little bit more cool is that the power of these systems grows exponentially with the complexity of the problem that it's trying to solve. So therefore, you know, solutions like AI, ML, security, and others are just perfect applications for this. But this technology is really changing the way that we do business, you know, introducing new business models across the board and forcing people to truly rethink you know, the way that they work. You think that gone are the days where everybody is assumed to work you know, inside the home office, you know, and you plan your careers Imagine you're gonna be with the same company for years or even decades at a time. It's just not the way it is anymore. And you know, companies now have to go in search of people and really interact with customers on their terms more than ever before. And so those technology disruptions, of course, are resetting all the boundaries for how and where really high quality work gets done. You know, that old hierarchical model that we all grew up with, the, you know, the pyramid structure, it's just not gonna scale that well into the future. And I think the most successful businesses are those that are gonna be much more decentralized and dynamic. And you hear these cool terms like, you know, the shape-shifting enterprise and liquid and fluid business. And really all that means is that those companies that can seamlessly shift both their people and their digital resources across workflows, just contextually putting that right information at people's fingertips, you know, how and when they need it, those are the ones that are gonna win, of course. And then to take advantage of, the, of all this, you gotta remember that people are totally integral and giving them the tools and the capabilities in this new way of working is gonna become a business necessity more than ever before. So what I wanna to do to really reinforce this point is walk through a typical scenario, one that I'm sure all of us can relate to. And so I'm gonna introduce you to a couple of pretty common characters for this story. And this one is Maria. Meet Maria. You know, Maria is a senior marketing manager and she's been with her company for a couple of years. You know, she's considered an absolute rock star at what she does. Awesome marketer. In fact, if this company could hire dozens or even hundreds of Marias, they would. Of course they would. But it's becoming harder and harder because, you know, talent's a problem. Maria's an example of what a lot of companies are facing right now. There's just not enough of the right people with the right skills in the right locations to get their jobs done. And I think this problem is only going to get worse as we go through major generational shifts across the planet. You know, you take the U.S., for example. Right now, baby boomers are retiring in mass, and they're taking with them just decades and decades of experience and specialized knowledge. In fact, this problem is getting worse, and it's a global problem, because McKinsey estimates that next year, there's going to be a shortage of fully 95 million medium and high-skilled workers. So finding the right people and retaining them has never been more important than it is today. A lot of companies are getting creative, though. They're looking for new ways and new talent pools to really engage with, with, with people. You know, eBay's a cool example. You know, eBay, we've all known and loved their products for years, and what they've done is really disaggregate the traditional call center model. They've disaggregated it using Citrix as a platform to tap into a large stay-at-home force of workers. You know, this non-traditional group might not have been part of the workforce a few years ago, but now they can be driving amazing productivity for both eBay and a way to engage in themselves without having to go into a home office and the old style of working. But I think this shortage is probably most pronounced in the areas that all of us work in, you know, high-tech fields, developer talent. And the majority of uh, CEOs that I talk to, and certainly a lot of customers here, all agree that it's one of those things that's getting in the way of driving your business growth across the board. 
So the key of all this, of course, is that you know, finding the right people, but you gotta make sure that the talent you have is as productive and absolutely as engaged in driving business outcomes as they can be. But you know, unfortunately, it's just not the case in many areas. You know, you take this example of Maria again. You know, Maria's not that engaged at work. She's got a very frustrated you know, work environment, fragmented processes, systems, et cetera. It blocks her from doing what she cares about. In this case, you know, that's marketing. She wants to be an amazing marketer, but the company keeps getting in the way. She's hearing from IT over and over again about why isn't this changing? And uh, you know, frankly, the pace is just too slow for her. But it's not just Maria. She's absolutely not alone. And this is truly a worldwide epidemic at this point. The Gallup organization has been looking at this, and they concluded that 85% of people globally are disengaged at work. 85. So you think about that stat for just a minute. Imagine if only 15% of your teams, 15, are like completely aligned in driving your business results. And when you couple that with the fact that you know, in most organizations, employees are the single largest expense, that means by definition, employees are your most valuable asset. But they're just generally not being treated as such. Imagine if any other asset in the portfolio was operating at 15% capacity. You guys would be all over that, really driving change across the board. And so, of course, we've been studying this and looking at you know, the reasons for what's driving this disengagement, really. And we've concluded that part of that is just they don't have access to the tools to do their best work, to the information necessary to do the things that they care about. Because think about employee experience for a minute. For the most people, it's about am I making a difference? You know, am I contributing? Am I moving the ball forward each and every day? And in a lot of cases, it's not true. And the typical engagement survey that most companies uh, go through each year, you know, imagine that web page that HR makes you fill out. You know, that looks at traditional managerial aspects. It very, very rarely looks at all these technology-related factors that are driving this. And so, of course, one area that's getting this probably more correct is in the consumer space. We've talked a lot about consumerization of IT over the years, and you know, unfortunately, I think they're pulling ahead, if anything. You know, think about Maria again. She checked in on a flight the other day, you know, engaging with JetBlue, and all Maria sees is just a nice, simple, elegant interface. She's totally unaware of all the back-end systems that are powering this, the authentication, the booking, the ticketing, scheduling, luggage tracking, you name it, across the board. It's just that one really simple workflow guiding her through the process. I mean, think about your own experience and imagine what's going to be easier you know, when you checked into that flight to come here this week. When you get back in the office and you have to fill out your expense report and try and get it approved up the chain of command, I think the answer is probably pretty obvious because for a lot of people, the tools you have in the office are a little bit like taking a step back in time. This is how most people start their day, of course. You're looking at an intranet page with a series of hot links or maybe it's some portal with a bunch of app icons. And, it's your job to dig through that and you know, find what you were looking for along the way. And when you do, you, know, you launch an app, and that app's gonna have a different experience every time. Doesn't matter if it's an AS400 app, maybe Win32 app, SaaS app, the chances are it's gonna have a different interface, different authentication, different workflow, different look and feel, probably different performance characteristics, different authentication, on down the line. It takes effort to remember all this. It takes up human RAM human RAM and distraction, just trying to toggle back and forth between all of these various tools. So in Maria's case, you know, her company thinks they're hiring her to be this specialized knowledge worker, but they're giving her the tools to be a repetitive task worker over and over again. And so really therein lies the gap, you know, this gap around productivity gap, the experience gap, and the engagement gap that is really hurting you know, businesses around the world. And if you don't believe me, let me give you one more example. Imagine the last time you walked up to one of these fancy copiers and you stared aimlessly at this dozens of buttons trying to remember, like, what is that sequence of things I have to push in order to make a copy? Because at the end of the day, all you really wanted to do was make a copy. But unfortunately, a lot of enterprise technology has been built for that 1%, that power user that needs all the bells and whistles that's out there. And, you know, they're the ones that know how to use those buttons. But guess what? Everybody else, I just want to make a copy. I want to push that button make that happen. But the technology that's been aimed at simplifying work in so many ways is just making it harder than it needs to. And all of these factors are really contributing to this problem with disengagement and lost productivity across the board. And if there's anybody that still doesn't believe this is a major, major problem, the other side of that Gallup study put a price tag on it. And they estimated that globally, 
This accounts for like seven trillion dollars of lost output. Seven trillion. Obviously that number is going to vary across geographies and across industries, but any way you look at it, that is a really, really, really big number. So we've been talking about Maria for a little while, and I'm pretty sure we can all relate to her because, you know, she's pretty typical of what we have on our teams right now. You know, this Maria is on the front line of this talent war that all companies are engaged in right now around the globe, trying to find the right people. And it's imperative that we solve a lot of these issues. You know, we make her more productive, just like everybody else. And the question is, why has that been so hard? You know, if these are such pressing problems, you know, like, why haven't we done anything about it? So you've got to look at it through the other lens, though, the lens of IT. And I'm going to introduce you to another character. This is Chris. And Chris is another guy that everybody knows pretty well. In this case, imagine that Chris is a senior IT manager, and he's in charge with supporting digital transformation, right? His goal is to make the company much more agile, much more efficient, much more productive uh, of a company. It's a clearly a critical role across IT. But his formula is pretty simple. Give people the right tools and the right, uh, the right solutions. They're going to be productive, and off we go. Makes sense, right? But the story of Chris is pretty similar to the story of Maria. It's often a lot, lot harder than it sounds. Because in this case, imagine that Chris started a few years ago. He had a team of, let's say, 10 people. Laundry list of tasks to do. Guess what? As time goes by, that laundry list is getting longer and longer, but his team has been optimized. And so you know, there's less capacity than there used to be. Right now, that to-do list isn't getting any shorter. And he's got you know, a lot of pain of just keeping up with everything. The business still wants change, but you know, he's got to manage all the complexity that he has today. And it's true for everyone. The average Citrix customer that's here today has about 500 applications in production right now. And over the years, I've talked a lot about this data center idea being compared to an archaeological dig. And what I've meant by that is that layers upon layers of technology just added on top of each other, creating more and more complexity over time. Because as an industry, I'd say, we're really good at adopting new. It's just much, much harder to you know, simplify what's already there. And that just creates more and more complexity, making the problem worse. And it's not going to change very rapidly. In fact, the majority of apps that you have in production right now are going to be there several years from now. They're just going to be there. And so when you think about all that, plus the fact that probably everybody here is on a cloud journey and you're introducing all these different third-party providers into the infrastructure, that just makes the equation that much more challenging. So put it all together. And it's no secret that, like most of you, Chris is struggling to figure out how to prioritize. The business wants change. The business wants engagement, of course. But you got to manage everything that's already there today. Typical IT budget these days, about 85 or 90 percent is spent on typical maintenance, just keeping the lights on, just leaving a little bit left over, that 10 or 15 percent for innovation. Just 10 or 15 percent of your focus is on innovation. And so, you know, we can all relate to these challenges because, frankly, this is what we all deal with on, on a day-to-day -day basis. We clearly believe that there's a better way. So the focus of Synergy this week is going to be talking about and demonstrating the solutions that we're bringing to market to help really address and solve a lot of these problems. For three decades, though, you know, I'd say that what we've done is really bridge people and technology, making people much more productive on their terms enabling these changing work styles around the cloud mobile era, and of course, helping support these generational shifts that we've talked about before, just making people more and more productive over time. We know the business outcomes that you're looking for, of course. You know, just amazing employee experiences, integrated security, and the choice in your infrastructure, and of course, across the endpoints. At Citrix, I'd say we don't look at these as mutually exclusive. You know, we're committed to delivering all three of those. And so for the rest of the conversation this morning, we're going to organize it across these three areas, experience, security, and choice, and do a deep dive into each one of them to really show you how we're bringing this to, to reality. But before they do that, though, let me provide a little bit of context on, on where we're going as an organization as kind of a setup here. So I'd say we've worked really hard over the last couple of years to transform the company. You know, we've moved from a collection of individual point products to much more integrated solutions in cloud services. You know, we've realigned everything. Frankly, we've realigned the organization. We've realigned our business model. We've even eliminated some of the product names themselves. And the focus on all this was around, uh, I'd say, simplification, overall innovation, and speed of delivery throughout the company. Because today, we look at Citrix really through the lens of three simple areas, workspace, networking, and analytics. 
We're going to continue delivering market-leading solutions in each one of these three areas, but I think the real power comes when we can bridge them all together into these more complete, integrated solutions end-to-end, -end, broadly differentiating and adding a ton of value for, for your end customers. But, you know, over the last 30 years, you've trusted us to handle, you know, your most important workloads, the stuff that is really mission critical to your organization. We've done this by pioneering and leading key categories like VDI, virtualization, app delivery, app networking, you name it. I think our focus has been on how do we deliver performance, you know, really enable cost efficiencies, and then just, uh, you know, ensure security across your business. And we absolutely thank you for the trust that you've placed in us on this journey and the partnership that we've had with everybody here for all those many years. But what a lot of you have asked for is to, you know, just take a little bit of a step back and think about enabling a platform that's, you know, a more diverse platform that really focuses on all users and all applications at the same time. Not just those that require the power of virtualization, but essentially a platform that benefits everybody, whether they're a power user and they need all those bells and whistles, or whether they have relatively simple requirements. Productivity apps maybe, a couple of SaaS solutions. The platform needs to add value to everybody while allowing you to at the same time abstract away some of that complexity in the infrastructure to make it easier to manage on a go forward basis. And when we get to this platform idea, you know, think about it, just really wall to wall, touching all individual users, then the tools that we layer on top start to take on just exponential value at that point in value on things like security analytics, on performance and productivity analytics, and of course, you know, the consistency. The consistency of looking at everybody through that single platform, you know, across the board. Ultimately, the experience, of course, has to be user-centric. You know, people-centric computing, because their experience is one of the most critical factors in determining the success of your overall, you know, initiatives that you have across the business. So we're working backwards, is the way I describe it, to really think about, you know, what it needs to be successful, secure, and really empower people, both how and where they work. So what we're gonna do now is, you know, let's deep dive into experience to talk much more about how we're gonna make this happen. So we'll go back to Maria for a minute. You know, we discussed the tools and techniques that Maria's been given to do her job, and like many people, she starts her day you know, just ready to change the world. You know, a lot of things she wants to accomplish. In her case, of course, that's making great marketing programs, right? And from the moment she starts her day, though, the moment she, you know, gets into the office, frankly, that's when stuff goes off the rails. That's when the reality sets in. So what I want to do now is just speed through a real quick video. We've sped it up here, so just follow along with me. But this is a pretty typical day in the life for, you know, somebody like Maria. Ready? Yep. Well, one thing she does when she pops in is she remembers, oh man, I got, forgot to do the PTO that I wanted to request for later in the week. So she's used this application, she's familiar with it, she kind of goes down through all the various steps that she's used to, and you know, not a big deal. It's been one before, but unfortunately she gets interrupted like we all do. Things come up, in this case, imagine that it's one of her teammates looking for you know, an approval of an expense report. Don't want them to get in trouble with, uh, with finance and want to keep people happy, so jumps into that application, re-authenticates, and starts going through those various workflows at the same time. Checking her calendar, there's a meeting coming up, but you know, unfortunately her soft phone's not working, so bounces into another application at the same time. Got to get that thing fixed before, uh, before that next meeting comes up. And guess what? Well, there's the boss, looking for information on this big deal that we've both been tracking at this point in time. So she needs to go dig around for that information, find that status, and off she goes over and over and over again before she can finally come back and respond to her boss and make it all happen. So hang on a sec, let me catch my breath. No, seriously, I sped up that video, of course, but in reality, it took about 10 minutes. 10 minutes all in where she's jumping back and forth between all these different in, uh, applications and interfaces, looking for information, you know, looking for ways to complete these tasks. And frankly, she's no closer to getting what she wants to get done which in this case, of course, is marketing. Don't get me wrong, though. These applications themselves are best of breed amazing tools. We use all the, every one that you saw here in the part of Citrix infrastructure. But the way companies think about them is often very, very isolated, or imagining that every single person in the company is a power user, a power user that wants that 1% functionality and doesn't mind digging through all those details. Or they just take a really simple workflow, just make it more complex than it needs to be. 
This is an example of what everybody deals with every day. And this is what's damaging productivity and really leading to this disengagement problem that I've talked a lot about. And from the employee perspective, yeah, it's pretty simple why. It's just too many apps. You know, the average person uses between seven and 12 applications every single day just to get your job done. But they're using just a little bit of that, too little usage. They're skinning the surface on what you know, the 99% of people want to do, which is probably just execute a simple workflow, not go through all of those steps and that cumbersome workflow. And then, of course, this idea of context switching. Think about it today. You know, today the stat is every two minutes. Every two minutes you're interrupted by a tweet, a notification, an email, a phone call, all that stuff. And it's forcing us to bounce back and forth between these things. And whether you like it or not, you know, the human brain's not wired to multitask nearly as effectively as you think it is. Just not the case. In fact, the studies show that every time one of these things happens, it takes you fully 20 minutes to get back to what you were doing in the first place. 20 minutes. That's part of the challenge. So if we're training people on these great consumer experiences, uh, guess what? Well, employees are cons consumers of your workplace. And so, you know, do they want what the workplace is delivering? Is it making them more effective? Is it making them better, more productive, more engaged? Unfortunately, the answer is, again, probably not. And this is what we're focused on simplifying, really simplifying the way people work with the intent of solving all of those problems for people. So let me explain the journey that we've been on to make this a reality. I'd say for 30 years, we focused on really connecting people and information. And I'd assert that we do that better than anybody in the world. As apps have evolved, really so has the company. In many ways, we've been focused on what I'd say is, let's call it organizing IT, really helping simplify some of that complexity, of course. But it's not just about making a, a, a portal for apps. It was really about creating a, a platform for work. So last year, we introduced the Citrix workspace, you know, moving beyond that app catalog idea for the first time to really help organize the way people work day in and day out. What was great is that we brought together for the first time all of their applications, whether those apps were SaaS, mobile, native, didn't really matter. All of your content, whether that was residing in some on-premises data store and one of many cloud services, and of course, making that you know, uh, seamless across devices. Really the first step in really driving that great user experience. So we thought about that as organizing work. So remember, the journey started with organizing IT, you know, moved to organizing work. And where we're going now is much more about taking this in, in a way that we can make work easier, helping to guide work from this point in time, looking for opportunities to simplify many of those common tasks that people have had to avoid this context switching between applications, allowing them to work, you know, basically the way they want to do. No more context switching, no more digging around for information at the same time. And this is what we think of as, as I said, guiding work. This is about making a better and more productive work experience. And the final step is gonna be automation. You know, leveraging new capabilities like ML and AI, where appropriate, to really help simplify and remove steps. Help people automatically complete tasks and, and improve productivity overall. That's really about automating work. So that entire journey. And so, the question is how are we gonna do this? To accomplish this, today we're introducing the intelligent experience inside the Citrix workspace. And for those of you that have already embraced the Citrix workspace, these are a set of capabilities that you are going to begin receiving before the end of the year. So we've infused the workspace with micro apps and intelligence in a way that's curated to serve you the information that you need in context when and how you need it. So you remember Maria's day just a few minutes ago where she struggled through those you know, 10 minutes of, of context switching between all those applications? Tell you what, let's take a look at the same thing through the eyes of the new workspace. Okay, so here we go. As she you know, starts the day, guess what? No context switching. She remembers that notification that she received inside of her feed about those expense reports, just pops open the tile right there, reviews the information in real time, hits approve, and off she goes. Oh, there's that uh, opportunity that she'd been looking at, $2 million. There's the status of it. She doesn't need to email her boss because, frankly, he gets the same thing inside of his feed right now himself. Soft phone's still not working, but fortunately up in the recommended actions, she can log a ticket in real time. 
Just drop down, no going back and forth between the applications, just getting going on what she needs to get done, simply and in context. Oh, forgot about that PTO. Fortunately, it's right there as well. All the simple, you know, uh, widely used things where she can just jump back and forth looking at the things that she needs to get her job done. And that's it. What took Maria 10 minutes and all those logins back and forth and struggling through that? Took her less than 30 seconds in the new Citrix workspace. Pretty cool, isn't it? I'll tell you what, our internal goal is to give people back one day per week. That's basically two months of productivity every single year. For a company the size of Citrix, that's three million hours. Three million hours that we can focus on driving our business forward. Sounds pretty ambitious, right? But when you step back and you look at the stats today, the average person spends one day a week looking for information right now, trying to remember which app it's coming from, which repository it's stored in, who's got the latest version. When you put it in those terms, frankly, that's crazy. It's not that ambitious. And we think this is a reality. There's good support for that. And there's a lot of companies that have already embraced many of these same concepts today. So this chart reflects the companies that have the most advanced digital transformation or digital workspace strategies right now. And the results are pretty awesome, right? Higher productivity, higher customer set, higher profitability, better growth rates, very impressive across the board. And we're fortunate enough to have one of these great companies here with us today, and that's CBS. One of the world's largest media companies with businesses spanning just about every medium for content creation and content delivery. They're a long-time Citrix customer, one of the early adopters of our micro-app platform, really transforming the way that they think about end-user productivity and user experience. So to talk a little bit more about this, please welcome Lox Natham, Senior Vice President of Business Delivery Services at CBS. Hey, David. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. I love it. I love it. Tell you what. Let's jump right in. So I'm sure everybody knows CBS, but I doubt that everybody has a full understanding of the true breadth and scope of all your digital properties. Why don't you give us a brief overview? Sure. CBS is made up of many companies. You may know us as CBS Network, which makes up CBS News, Sports, Entertainment, and Studios. You may also know us as Local Business, aka TV stations. But we are also strong in other areas. Cable, we have Showtime, Pop TV, Smithsonian, we're strong in publishing, Simon Schuster. Um, we, also, see, we also have a very major presence on the digital space with CBS Interactive. CBS Interactive supports over 30 properties, including CBS All Access. CBS All Access is a digital subscription, video on demand, and live streaming service. Speaking of Suniqua Martin Green, AKA Michael Burnham, Star Trek Discovery, is exclusively on CBS All Access. So clearly your team is playing a huge role in digital transformation across uh, the company right now. And one of the areas you've obviously prioritized is around you know, user experience. Can you tell everybody what really motivated you and maybe share your strategy and some of the results you've seen from that? In the past, we were not focused on the different cultures of our organization. We treated end user rollouts as IT projects. In the last year, we rede redefined our IT or uh, team to be a consolidation of engineers, of client service technicians and end user experts to form a workplace and collaborate a continuous service team. The goal of this team is to align the technical solutions for a variety of areas such as onboarding, offboarding, identity, collaboration, and enterprise communication. The main focus has been aligning with our different brands. In particular, CBS Interactive uses the Citrix micro app tool to support the HR performance management uh, processes. It is tailored to CBS Interactive, and we continue to see ourselves moving down a more agile method of delivering solutions to our end users. Super cool. So I'll tell you what, I think we all know that you guys continue to expand your digital service lines you know, pretty aggressively right now. And probably one of the biggest and most ambitious was streaming the Super Bowl last year to the widest audience ever, leveraging Citrix Intelligent Traffic Management. So tell us a little bit about that initiative and some of the results you achieved there as well. Sure. It was our largest initiative. ITM was a big factor in its being a successful project. 
We are a digital company, and we need to have a foundation to support a large-scale digital audience for all of our content. So I'll tell you what, though. As compared to football, digital transformation, they keep moving the goalpost all the time. So <laughs> what's next? Uh, we continue to find ways to create, deliver, and monetize our content. Our digital transformation is aligned with our business goals. And CBS continues to adapt our technologies to both our customers and our end users. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at what Citrix is doing to help everybody's experience. Please welcome Chief Product Officer, PJ Hawk. An intelligent workspace. What does it really mean to make a workspace intelligent? To make it personal to me, and to make it adapt to the way that I work. Well, it's really important that the workspace helps me organize my work so that I feel confident that I have all the necessary tools and all of the work is visible to me. It's very important that the workspace guides what I do, that helps me understand what's the most important thing to focus on, and also that it helps me automate some of the more mundane and routine parts of the job that I do every day. What we're doing in the workspace is we're distilling applications into personalized units of work. We're all very familiar with the power and the scope of these large applications, but really, sometimes we just want one piece, one unit of work out of that application. And that is what we're surfacing inside the workspace. We're taking inputs from all of the applications in your portfolio. We're breaking down the units of work inside each one of them. And we're surfacing them in a meaningful and personalized way to individual users so that they can do their best work in the workspace. And that they can also collaborate with their teams using whatever collaboration tools and platform is most comfortable to them. You know, the Fundamental building blocks of this workspace uh, are evident in many of the tools we use today in our consumer lives. Rich feeds that are personalized to us, that bring us points of interest, topics that matter to us, some of which are pushed to us and some of which we have expressed interest in. Notifications, just-in-time notifications. We know it today from our flight getting rescheduled, our availability for tickets, or other things, why don't we have that same capability of just-in-time notification in our workspaces? How about one-click actions? Book it now. Reserve it. Uh, book the table. There are so many of these things that we're familiar with, but that haven't necessarily surfaced inside our work environments. And finally, recommendation engines. Uh, we've subtly become used to having recommendation engines, whether it's in our collections of books, or the TV shows we watch, or other forms of media that get more tuned to our needs over time. We've been on a journey with the workspace, moving from an organized metaphor around your virtual apps and desktops. Last year, we introduced support for not just those virtualized apps, but also your SaaS applications and your mobile applications and all your content. But you know that digital revolution that occurred on uh, mobile, it really hasn't occurred yet inside the enterprise until today. Welcome to the revolution. This is the new Citrix Intelligent Workspace Experience.
So let's take a look in some detail at what's really going on inside the workspace. First of all, we've preserved the familiar, as you would hope and expect. So all of your applications are still here. They're all still available. All of your content, your files, local and cloud hosted are all available. My recent files are all here. You see them on the right, along with my recent apps. But the centerpiece of the workspace is this new feed, a personalized, customized, prioritized feed for Maria. This should look quite familiar to her uh, because it is made up of cards, just like many of the other feeds that she sees and uses today. You'll see that the feed is composed of notifications from the applications that she uses on her daily, in her daily basis. So right here, she can sit and operate in the context of the workspace uh, with confidence that these are the most important things that she needs to focus on. Let's see her uh, work on some of the items in the workspace here. The first one is an expense report uh, for a new headset from Chip. Well, they've already talked about this earlier, and so right there she can just approve that and move on. That expense is now dealt with. Chip also has another expense. It's for a business trip that he's gone on recently to visit a partner in Dallas. A little more expensive than she was expecting. Uh, so she can get out the detailed information directly from Concur here in the workspace. And, oh yeah, uh, the restaurant bill might be contributing a little bit. They probably have a good wine list. But right here she gets enough detail to make a decision about what she wants to do with this expense. And she's confident that this was a critical meeting and so she approves the expense. Next in her feed, she sees that there's an opportunity that's closed and has been won. This was a project that she was involved in, but not directly. How many times have you been involved in such a project and when the outcome happens, you don't even know the answer? It causes email and Slack channels and text messages just to keep track of what's really going on. Here she gets a direct notification, as do all the other members of the team who worked on that. This is really important because we're trying to drive engagement for Maria here in the workspace. Next, this is a project that she's working on where she sees that her marketing campaign is actually driving pre-orders higher than she anticipated, than the team anticipated. And she wants to share this news with them. She's sharing it using Microsoft Teams, which we've integrated here. Uh, we're also going to integrate with other collaboration tools, but this is her tool of choice for her team. And so this is a great example of her taking a personal insight that she has about how a project is working and actually converting it into a collaborative conversation with her team. Truthfully, this is what Maria gets paid to do. Build great campaigns, drive collaboration across the team, educate people, and get engaged in the core of the business. So what you see here in the workspace <clears throat> is the feeds that come, some of which are pushed to Maria, some of which relate to projects that she has expressed an interest in, but in all cases, prioritized and actionable. No longer will she have 10 or 12 additional applications open at the end of the day to process all of these individual microtransactions. She can accomplish so much more here and with the confidence that this is prioritized and organized. Now it turns out that the activity feed is not the only innovation that we've added to the workspace. We're also adding an assistant. Some of us have become familiar with bots and assistants in other environments. Well, we're, we're adding it to the workspace. And we'll talk more about that later. But what's important here is it's another way for Maria to initiate work inside the workspace. So not only is she doing things that are sent to her, she can uh, initiate activities. I want to draw your attention in the upper right to the recommended actions. Think for a moment about your to-do list and the things that you write on your to-do list and the form that they take. Arrange a meeting with the marketing department, send out a draft of the document. Rarely do we, in our to-do list, write the names of the applications we're going to use. We don't think applications. We think actions. And this recommended action list is mapping for Maria actions to applications. We all have a way in our company of creating a ticket or applying for time off. 
but we tend not to think of the app first. When we sit and think, we tend to think of the app uh, second and the activity first. We have a long list here of actions that Maria can choose from, and she's chosen one, which is to create a ticket to actually get a new micro app built. This new micro app is going to add a Salesforce account approval application into her workspace. And so right here, she's creating a ServiceNow ticket from within the workspace, remaining in context of her feed and the work that's most important to her. So that's a quick look at the desktop version of the workspace experience. What do you think? Of course, we've also thought really hard about how the workspace should manifest itself on mobile devices. And we all recognize that the nature of the work that we do on a mobile platform is actually different than the work we do on a desktop. But there are many things that we can carry over, and the feed is one of those. So right here you see, again, front and center in the mobile workspace experience, the feed. And in this case, uh, it's telling me that we've had a new employee uh, join the team. Now, in most companies today, this is sent out as an email uh, and shared with the whole team, some of which we get to read. Um, and the same is true for promotions. And in fact, we recently had a, a, a promotion at, at Citrix, and the announcement email that uh, announced the promotion went out to quite a few people who forwarded to quite a few people, and it was all very good. Uh, but then that dreaded thing happened where somebody decided they would reply all. Uh, and of course, the floodgates opened. Once that first reply all is unleashed, everybody feels empowered to reply all. Well, we pulled the logs for the company and discovered 20,000 notifications had been sent. So here in the feed, you can also see that there are, we've optimized it for simple, quick tasks, approving time off, approving expenses, but we've also carried forward some of the detailed views that we have and seeing this particular expense report, the pen's maybe a little expensive or maybe it's just one really nice pen, uh, difficult to tell, uh, but that's, this expense report is being returned. But here again, we've optimized that experience for the mobile device and for the moments and the minutes that users have between their meetings, maybe riding the elevator, maybe waiting for the conference call to start. This is when they can get to their workspace and accomplish those small tasks that sometimes are holding up the entire organization. Maybe that approval is required for other people to start work on, a, on an important project. Earlier I mentioned the uh, assistant, the workspace assistant, and I think the best place to show how that assistant can really help is on a mobile device. Here you can see Maria enter in a natural language query to figure out how much time off does she have. This is translated into an intent that goes to the HR system and the workspace does the digital commute and returns to her her vacation balance, 18 days. From here, she actually requests time off, submitting a request and getting it into the system, initiating a workflow. So again, not just response, but also initiating new activities within the workspace. This is the mobile experience for the Citrix workspace. What do you think of that? While we've been embarking on this uh, project, we've been very focused on a people-centric design, really understanding how people work with applications today, how they work with the platforms and the tools that not only we deliver, but that are available, broadly speaking, inside enterprises. And we believe that the most important thing is to really deliver a delightful experience. Research shows that if you deliver a really delightful experience that's native and intuitive, what happens over time 
is people become more engaged with the applications and they become more efficient. As a result of becoming more efficient, they become more productive. The experience drives to the bottom line in your organization. And by adding intelligence into the experience, we can keep you in context, keep you engaged, and continue to improve the experience over time. So really our objective here is to deliver a compelling experience that maps all the way to measurable improvement in the productivity and the responsiveness of the organization. Now, at the heart of the workspace is, of course, those connectors to the line of business applications. And later this year, when we ship the workspace intelligence experience, we'll also ship uh, this set of connectors and, and potentially others. But we know that this is not a complete list and doesn't represent all the applications in your organization. Uh, in fact, we're also shipping at the same time a micro app builder to allow you to extend the workspace experience for your enterprise, your organization, with the apps that make most sense to you. We're going to ship. We're going to ship a full API-driven developer experience, as well as a no-code, low-code, drag-and-drop environment for the construction of these micro apps. Let's take a look, actually, at what it is like to build one of these micro apps. So this is Chris's workspace, where it turns out he has an item in his activity feed, which is that ServiceNow request from Maria to build a Salesforce app. So what he does uh, here from within the workspace is he goes to uh, his Citrix cloud deployment, which has all of our integrated services, including the micro app service front and center. He launches the micro app service and has these three simple steps to follow to pick the integration for the application that he wants to build, build the micro app on top of it, and then assign it out customized to the users. So these are some of the integrations that he's using in his company. And you can see that uh, since it's a Salesforce app, he chooses Salesforce as the integration here. And then he gets to design the experience that shows up on that feed card that shows up in uh, Maria's workspace. He gets to set the triggers and who actually gets to see it under what conditions. He also gets to design that blade that slides out with the actions on it, in this case, uh, approve and reject and determine what business rules get followed back on the, on the back-end system to uh, really make this a complete micro-application experience. And finally, we see what it would look like in uh, Maria's workspace, a new micro-app added. So really, the intelligent experience that we're delivering into the Citrix workspace we believe is transformative. It is the start of a new revolution in how to think about delivering modern experiences on uh, a workspace platform to all your users across the entire uh, portfolio of applications that you have. And so we are continually pushing the boundary forward with regard to modernizing the experience for IT and delivering them the tools to help them really simplify and deliver a very modern, compelling, and engaging experience to their users. Of course, we still live in a hybrid world, and we still live with a lot of other applications that are not SaaS and not mobile. And so I'm very pleased to announce today that we'll be introducing into the Citrix workspace local application support. So this is a really important capability and an acknowledgement that even as applications move to the cloud, move onto the web, move into our data centers, we still have really important local applications that we want to deliver and manage on our endpoints. And using our endpoint management solution, you'll be able to deliver those apps and have them show up and deliver a great experience in the context of the workspace. We think this will be a really big help uh, to, to IT. 
Speaking of IT, we've been talking a lot about Maria. Let's talk a little bit about what's been going on for the last few years for Chris in the organization. Well, there's been a lot of movement in his applications. Actually, a lot of movement in devices. And frankly, a lot of movement in employees. People who sat down the hall from him are now working remote. Uh, they're working, they're commuting and working, they're on a new set of mobile devices, some of which he didn't provide, and they're using a wider array of apps than ever before. But yet Chris, with his budget, is still trying to deliver a great experience to all of these employees. And what used to be quite predictable now feels to him a little bit like a gamble. Where does he place his next resource bet? Where have the bets that he's already placed, where have they paid off? And where should he invest next? Well, what if Chris had more insight into what he had already given to his users with regard to capability? In fact, what if he really knew what the experience was that each individual user was having in his organization? Not a measure of his infrastructure, not a measure of his network, not a measure of uptime, a measure of the experience of individual users. I'm very pleased today to introduce Citrix Analytics for Performance. So this is a brand new set of services built on top of our analytics platform except this time, rather than aimed at solving security-related problems in organizations, this is a set of services aimed at uncovering performance, and in particular, end-user performance. We're actually going to ship a quantified end-user experience score metric that Chris can use on a regular basis to assess his own deployment and improve it over time. Let's take a look at what that dashboard would look like. So right here you see, off the bat, Chris is actually doing pretty good. He has an average score of 80 out of 100 for the performance of his deployment. Of course, it's an average, which means that he has some users who are experiencing worse than that. In fact, there are some users who have a score as low as 50 in his deployment. And so from this dashboard right here, he can click down to the next level of detail where he sees that, in fact, it's log on time that is really contributing most to the poor experience that that set of users is experiencing. And finally, he can click from here into the next level of detail where he actually gets maybe an or rank ordered list of the things that are contributing to that log on time. And in this case, it looks like he may have some policies that are either conflicting or misconfigured. Uh, on the endpoints that these, uh, these users have. So now we've gone from a uh, macro view of his entire deployment to isolating a set of users with a particular set of problems and identifying the most likely fix. This will be a huge benefit to Chris. Many of these users may not even have called the help desk. So think of this as a proactive way for him to get out in front. What's really most important for me about this set of services is they apply to all Citrix deployments. If you are on-prem, if you are in Citrix Cloud, if you are hosted with a partner, you can connect up to the performance services and get clear understanding of what's going on inside your deployment. We're doing all of this work, both for Maria and for Chris, in service of delivering an even better experience. But you know we're not the only company out there who really focuses on experience. We have some great partners who also are on this journey with us to deliver great experience. And none better at focusing on that experience than Microsoft. And so please join me in welcoming to stage Brad Anderson, Corporate Vice President, Enterprise Experiences and Management. DJ, how are you? Give you a hug. Uh, I have to say welcome back. 
Yeah, I gotta say, it's like coming home here. I've been um, coming to Citrix for so long. In fact, my first time was actually 1998, 21 years ago, and it was called Finergy, you know? Uh, you know, this is a, a historic partnership between these two organizations for multiple decades. We've learned and we've understood how to work together to deliver new innovation, new value, and I think in many ways set the mark in the industry. And in fact, when I used to work directly for Satya, in our weekly one-on-one, -on -one, we would often talk about the innovation we were doing and the importance of the Citrix partnership. Uh, in fact, you know, rather than me talk about it, let's, uh, let's just hear from Satya. Great. Thank you, Brad. As I meet with business leaders around the world, it's clear that digital technology is transforming every place, every industry, everything. Whether it's precision agriculture or precision medicine, from smart cities to smart factories, digital transformation is changing how we live and how we work. At Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Core to this mission is deep partnership with companies like Citrix. Working closely with Citrix, we aim to help our mutual customers thrive in this era of rapid technological change. Citrix long been a leader in Windows and Windows app virtualization, and this leadership now extends to the cloud. We're working together to deliver the best virtual desktop experience on Azure by bringing together the power of Windows Virtual Desktop with Citrix Cloud Services. We're working together to secure the modern workplace, enabling employees to securely access the applications they need from anywhere on any device by integrating Citrix services with EMS. And we're working together to optimize Microsoft Teams for Citrix virtualization, so or any organization can make full use of both hosted desktop and Teams. And this is just a start. I'm excited about what's yet to come and our collective opportunity ahead. Thank you all very, very much, and I wish you a great event. All right, so let's kind of set the stage a little bit about some of the things we're going to talk about today. You know, at Microsoft, if you really simplify where our focus is, it's Microsoft 365 and Azure. Microsoft 365, this is what we think the foundation of the modern workplace is. It delivers that experience that enables users to achieve more and be productive across all their devices in a way that users love and IT trusts. You know, this is Windows 10, this is Office 365, and then our cloud management security uh, and device management in EMS. And just to give you an idea of the scale of this, there are now more than 800 million Windows 10 devices that are actively being used. Uh, we just recently announced that there's 180 million monthly active users of Office 365, and across our management capabilities, we're now managing more than 150 million Windows, iOS, Android, and Mac devices. That data comes back. That becomes the most interesting data set on the planet for you know, operating on with AI, as you and David have talked about, for insights and automation. And of course, that's all built on Azure. You know, Azure is now being used by more than 90% of the Fortune 500. You know, having worked on this since day one, the, the scale is just mind-boggling at times. You know, you and I were both there in the early, early days of that. You know, it's, it, when people think about Azure, it's trust. It's about enterprise ready. We have the most broad set of compliances on, in the industry with more than 90 certifications. You know, and finally, you know, we spend more than a billion dollars a year in just security investments from an, from an engineering perspective, the majority of which ensuring that Azure remains that secure and trusted cloud platform. So let's talk about some of the things we're doing across both of those. That, that would be great. And I'll have to say that certainly when I talk to enterprise customers, we get asked regularly about the partnership because they understand and they uh, realize just how important it is that our technologies work really well together. And uh, certainly the momentum that you have around uh, Windows 10 and Office 365 in tune. Uh, I think it's something that's, that's important to all of our, our customers and to all of our partners also. Yeah, so literally when PJ and our teams get together and, and you know, with myself, we sit down and we, 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 we literally go item by item in Microsoft 365 and Azure, what's the next set of innovations that align with what both of us are doing and what you need? So let's, let's dive in. So I thought it would be fun to go from the data center to the device. Yep, through the network. And just wa and walk through the network, walk yep, all the way out to the endpoint. Um, so let's start with some announcements. Um, the first announcement uh, that I'm delighted to make is that we're introducing a Citrix managed desktop service uh, for Azure, exclusively for Azure. So this is, this is a turnkey DAS service built with Citrix technology and Microsoft technology combined on Azure 
to make it so easy for organizations of many sizes and scales to really get the benefits of a first-class Windows experience on Azure managed from uh, Citrix. Yeah, we love this. You know, historically, VDI has been one of the top 10 workloads in the data center. So bringing this to Azure and having this hybrid control plane from Citrix is, is just, just wonderful. I think the thing that's, that everyone should just remember about this and why this is so important, this service on top of Azure, it's about the experience that's been talked about this morning. And specifically, it's about proximity. You know, with Azure, we have more Azure Cloud data centers than our two top competitors combined. And what that means is that distance from your users to where the Windows workstation is running is shorter. And then that co-location of the, the VDI instances in Azure where Office 365 is co-located mean that proximity to the user and to the data is the smallest possible. And that's key to delivering that great experience. And so that's one of the key things I think differentiates this offer on top of Azure. So let's take a quick look at what that's going to look like because we've really focused on making it as simple and turnkey as possible. So here, uh, an IT administrator on Citrix Cloud gets to uh, basically create a catalog uh, and assign some users to it, pick their, az uh, their Azure region that they want. You can see that some of these uh, folks here have just a regular email address. Uh, we pick a Windows 10 image, we add the applications to it, and send an invite out to each of those individual users. And in a matter of hours, uh, from that one experience, they've actually built a set of desktops that go to all of those users. And you think about what Citrix has been doing for you know, 20 years. I was thinking about this as I was flying down yesterday. Concept of server farms, auto provisioning, load balancing. These are just things that are just core to the cloud, but you were innovating on this you know, decades ago. And so yep. it's fantastic to see all that knowledge and experience coming into Azure. And we're also building this turnkey service for, for partners, so that partners can actually pick up this and deliver it to their customers also. We know that that's going to be really important. It's not the only use case. In fact, we, we've thought about contingent workers, merger and acquisitions. Uh, there are probably some workloads that are entirely suited to this particular uh, turnkey solution. And so we expect in, in enterprises to see a mixture of traditional apps and desktops along with the Citrix managed desktop uh, solution. No, the reality is most organizations are using a combination of distributed computing, centralized computing, and with Microsoft 365 in that modern workplace, customers can choose how they want to deliver it out to their users, and most organizations are going to use a combination. It's where we work together. So one of the big innovations from you this year that we're also partnering on, taking advantage of, is the support for the um, um, Windows Virtual Desktop instances in, in Azure. So this is a, it's a, it's a big innovation, and it's great to see the new capabilities that you're going to deliver natively for Windows running in Azure. And we're just going to support that as a new type of deployment that you can manage from, from Citrix Cloud, from, uh, along with our other apps and desktop solution. Yeah, this carries forward how the two organizations have worked together for decades. You know, as Microsoft continues to kind of like push the platform forward, Citrix has always understood, and, and we've worked together to make sure that there's value on top of that. You know, with Windows Virtual Desktop, there's a couple of key things to understand about it. First of all, it's the only license in the market where you can host Windows 10 desktops in a public cloud. It contains, you know, the ability for you to, this is a part of Microsoft 365 E3, so all the licenses for virtualization are a part of that. And I'll tell you, the interest in this has just been off the charts. Since we put this in preview, there have been more than 4,500 unique tenants already created, like exceeded all the expectations of what we had, what we had kind of mapped out for the interest on this. And so we love the fact that Citrix is, in, is in, introducing this. You know, we've been working with Citrix on this for more than 18 months. When the idea was conceived, you know, the first thing we did is we came to PJ and company said, hey, we need to do this, we need to work on this, let's go get on together. Um, and the work has gone phenomenally well. Yeah, we're very excited. We're going to offer day one support for the Windows Virtual Desktop from Citrix Cloud as soon as it's available. For yeah, in fact, you're ready to go. You're waiting on us right now. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, I think one of the things that's really important about these models of uh, hosted computing is, is the consumption footprint actually starts to matter a lot. Yeah. And it's an area where, you know, because of the way we've architected to run on Windows and our investments in protocols, we're actually seeing substantial performance differences relative to our competition in some of these areas. So for example, uh, recent tests that we've done, we've seen up to 89% difference in cost of running our apps and desktop solution default settings versus VMware Heisen Blast Extreme uh, on the same, uh, the same platform. Uh, and we think... 
so this, this plays into, a, I think, an important uh, um, decision that customers are going to have to make about the cost of ownership over time, especially if they see increased usage, because that consumption is an ongoing part of the way they have to think about the, the, uh, the, the cost of their deployment. Yeah. So if we have great windows running in Azure, the next thing people will want is great application experiences. Yeah, let me just give you a little bit of insights in Teams. For those of you who are not using it, it does change how you work. You know, uh, I spend more time in Teams now than I do in email, and I think about those individuals who are kind of in my inner loop, the ones that I interact with the most. It's exclusively on Teams now. Teams is the fastest, the fastest adopted uh, application in Microsoft's history. There are more than a half of a million unique organizations running this in production right now. You know, 91 of the Fortune 100 are using it. The, the interest and the adoption of this has, uh, has just been amazing. Again, the fastest uh, deployment or the fastest embracing of any application in Microsoft's history. And so we've worked together to optimize Teams and Citrix together to deliver that great experience in a virtualized environment. Yeah, I, I think it's a natural extension. You know, great Windows uh, running on Azure and now great app experiences. And I think this is just the next really important application and it's that about we've that decided choice. to optimize. And it's about that choice. Do you want to run it centrally? Do you want to run it distributed? You can do that and have that great experience. I'll give you an idea of just how fast this is being adopted. As I was looking at the dashboard this morning, we were just shy of 300,000 users that are using Teams on top of Citrix today in production today. And so yeah. it's been fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for the work here. Oh, great. You know, one of the things I think that we've both observed as customers have moved more to SaaS and to cloud applications is that it changes the way they think about their networks. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you've discovered and, and, uh, in, and, and in partnership with us, some of the work that we're do doing together? You know, one of the responses I have at the company is I run what's called the Fast Track Organization, which is the engineering um, team that's um, responsible for actually going out and helping customers deploy all of Microsoft 365. Before we can even get, for example, Office 365 deployed, there's two things we always have to do. We have to help them stretch their identities up in the cloud with Azure Active Directory, and generally we have to help them redesign their networks. Most organizations have a hub and spoke model. It's what they were built for when there were no cloud services, and so you have to modernize it. You know, I take a look at some of the reports that come back in our dashboards, and you can see what the experience is of a file open, of getting email, and when we see experiences that are slow, Inevitably, it comes down to a networking issue where the company has just got a poor network or a poorly designed network and needs to be updated. So we've been partnering very closely with the uh, Office 365 team to really understand the signature and the nature of Office 365 traffic. And instead of routing that back over a uh, network to a corporate headquarters, which in, in turn routes it back to, to Microsoft, we're diverting that traffic from the branch directly, shortest path, to the nearest Office 365 point of presence. And the result of that is kind of staggering. Huge. The performance gains that customers are seeing. You know, I, I joke about this one with the team. Sometimes, Brad, uh, I used to work on database benchmarks where you would instrument the database and you would have the timers right before and after so you could catch the smallest differences in the performance. Then, you know, if it was big differences, you could use a stopwatch. I think you could use the office <laughs> clock. Yeah. In this case, some of these differences are, are huge. so yeah, measurable huge. and so obvious uh, that these are really noticeable to users. Yeah, and this is, this is truly deep integration that the organizations have done together. You know, we see so much of the capabilities that Citrix has here from the network perspective in use. And so making that great experience, and this is all about delivering that incredible experience as your users move into using mobile devices in the cloud and getting away from that boomerang of back to the company and then out to the cloud. Yeah. So we did unique work with SD-WAN for Office 365, but we've actually taken the generic version of that and we've pushed it all the way right. through for virtual apps and desktops and managed desktops, which means that that last mile inside of Azure is also part of that path that's protected and optimized from the branch all the way through to your running Windows instance. So we think, again, this is another great innovation of actually solving some of those core networking challenges for enterprises. And we talk about the technology here, but it's all, it's all about experience, it's all about speed, and it's all about making your users more effective. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have more? I think we actually do have more. Brad, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the changes you've made recently in Intune? You bet. 
You know, so as we, as we were doing early deployments of Office 365, one of the things that we started to see was CISOs in our, in our clusters would come on and say like, hey, we love the concept of moving to the cloud with Office 365, but the perimeter-based security model we've had in place doesn't, doesn't help us anymore because then mobile devices are talking directly to the cloud. So we had to go figure out how to pioneer the concept of conditional access in the cloud where you could not rely upon the perimeter. And so in Microsoft 365, we built what was called conditional access. And what that allows us to do is have a perspective of the trust of a user, the trust of a device in a zero trust model, and only grant access to the services if the user and device combination is trusted. And so what we've now been able to do is, you know, with, with, with EMS, which again is our cloud management identity and security solution, we now have more than 100 million licenses in the market. It's by far the most commonly used tool to manage identities as well as devices. We're building a new API into Intune that will allow solutions like Zen Mobile to be able to send information in a cloud-to-cloud -cloud model that we will then be able to take and use as we determine the trust level of a device. And so a Zen Mobile MDM managed device is now gonna be able to send telemetry into Intune. Intune will take that, combine that with other data sets, and then flow into the rest of the Microsoft 365 conditional access solution. So those of you who are using Zen Mobile today, this is an, another example of how we're working together to make that experience better, give you that great experience in a zero trust model. Yeah, and I think, you know, in addition to experience, Brad, where we're both very focused on delivering a great unified experience to customers, I think security is the other area where our joint customers hope that we're collaborating, whether it's uh, Citrix Analytics connected into the security graph, or it's the Intune APIs and conditional access integration with, with Zen Mobile. So I think this is part of a, a broader effort on both of our parts to really try to deliver the most secure experience to enterprise yeah. customers. And we're trying to get out of this tyranny of or for far too long, organizations have had to choose between a great experience or security. Yep. Now, we're delivering that great end user experience, that modern workplace that's loved by users and trusted by IT. And that's well, what we're going to do as we go forward. Absolutely. Brad, you know, just thinking about that set of announcements that, that we've just made, starting with the data center and the great work that we're doing together on Windows Virtual Desktop and on Windows Managed Desktop Service, the Citrix Managed Desktop Service, and then SD-WAN and all of the networking work, uh, the HDX optimization for Teams, and finally the Intune integration work. We really are taking an end-to-end -end view yes. of really trying to deliver great experience for our customers. It's been a fantastic year for the partnership. We recently renewed our partnership agreement. Um, I'm sure we'll have a, a signing ceremony at some point, but the, <laughs> I know the agreement has been renewed yet again. Yes. So thank you for your ongoing partnership, Brad. Thank, thank you very you much. Agree. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So we've talked a lot about experience and many different facets of area where we're contributing to improving the user experience. We fundamentally believe that the intelligent and automated experience that we're delivering inside the Citrix workspace will really transform the way that we think about work and the way we think about delivering the best experience to employees. The people-centric performance analytics work that we're doing, that we put in the hands of IT for the first time ever, real user experience metric scores that they can use to measure the performance that they're delivering, we think that's absolutely crucial. And for important flagship products like Office 365, we fundamentally believe that we're delivering the best experience everywhere. Thank you. Please welcome Vice President, Product Marketing, Calvin Shu. Wow. So that new intelligent experience in the Citrix workspace is really going to go a long way towards helping employees like Maria solve that problem of having too many apps and too much context switching and being disengaged at work. But there's another big challenge that we all have. Security, privacy, compliance. 
And while there are a lot of technologies that we can go out there and buy to protect our servers and our infrastructure, protect our networks, the reality is that it's people, it's us, it's you guys, that are the most vulnerable threat vector in our organizations. And it's not that we're trying to do something bad or risky, it's just we're trying to get our jobs done as efficiently as possible. So what ends up happening in an organization? Guys like Chris and the security operations teams, by 2021, they're going to spend over a trillion dollars in the private sector alone just on digital security capabilities. Right? And that's just the technology piece of it. What about building that list of behaviors and policies, that list of no's? Don't do this, don't do that. If anyone here has ever had to put together a security policy document, you, know, you do a little search online and try to find some of those templates, there's literally hundreds of pages of templates listing everything that employees can't do, shouldn't do, mustn't do. And for that small percentage of employees that actually read that policy document end to end, and could actually answer a policy quiz and pass compliance, that works great, right? But clearly that's not going to be the answer. And in fact, 80% of CISOs say that they get regular complaints that the security measures that they put in place are not only harming productivity, but they're hampering innovation. So let's talk about taking a new approach, right? Brad and PJ were talking about, we need to balance that experience with security. And where a lot of security technologies are focused on disabling what an end user can do, the Citrix workspace is focused on enabling the employee, giving them a great experience while allowing IT to have the security and the peace of mind that it needs about that. So fundamentally, what we're gonna do in our approach is we're gonna make security a core aspect of the workspace. We're going to place security measures in right next to that user experience that the end users are gonna love so much. And then we're gonna give IT the choice of how to implement that, what solutions to use to create that security. Okay, so let's dive into this approach and how this is gonna look. So the promise of the workspace, we've been saying all along, is that we're gonna put everything you need to be productive in one unified experience. And that new intelligent experience is why employees will prefer to do their work in the workspace. I'm gonna say that again. Employees are going to want everything coming through their workspace. It's more efficient, they're more productive, it's more engaging. And they're gonna want you to build more micro apps, to put all their applications, that new SaaS service that they subscribe to without you knowing about it. They're gonna ask you to make sure that that goes to the workspace because their experience is better there. And in that process, we get them into a more secure environment. But you know what, you're not gonna put all of your apps in one basket unless you know that you have an end-to-end -end approach for securing that environment. And so while we're delivering that great experience, we're also gonna deliver a host of security capabilities, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So what makes Citrix's approach to security a little bit unique? Well, we address the what, the who, the how, and the why of securing all of those applications. So first, with the what, we know what device you're using. We have endpoint management capabilities and integrations with things like EMS. So we understand what the device is, what their security posture is, is it in compliance or not? And then we know who is using that device. We broker the identity to a number of identity providers. We give them a single secure sign-on experience, provide multi-factor where it's appropriate, which is pretty much all the time. And then we know who they are and what it is that they're authorized to be doing. And then we can see how they're accessing their applications as well. So through the workspace, we can see what virtual app they're using, virtual desktop, maybe it's a virtual browser, maybe it's a virtual browser that runs in the Citrix cloud, enabling you to offload some of that gray area traffic into, uh, into our cloud. Maybe it's just a web gateway doing some URL filtering. We give you control over the environment that is used to access that application. 
And last but not least, the why. Why are they accessing that data in the first place? What information are they after? Are they authorized to use it? Is it within their normal behavior profile to be accessing it? And then set some access controls and rights around that. So this framework provides us the basis for applying a lot of different types of policies. Policies that I'm sure a lot of you here as Citrix customers are very familiar with, and you rely on this day to day to build trust into your IT environments. So we can do things like eliminate, cut, copy, paste, limit printing capabilities, maybe filter out some URLs, and make sure that people aren't going to the sites that they shouldn't be. Right? And all these policies can get applied now to the entire workspace. So last year at Synergy, when we introduced the workspace, one of the big things that came out of there was folding in that world of SaaS applications and being able to uh, provide these types of policies that you've done for decades, really, on virtual apps and desktops, start doing that with your SaaS applications as well. So here's a quick reminder of what that looks like in action. Right? So in this scenario, um, this is the, uh, the current workspace. And we're going to launch um, a SaaS application. In this case, we're going to launch Salesforce. And if you watch closely, it's going to actually launch into a browser. It's a native browser embedded in the workspace for which we have policy controls. We can set things like the watermarking in the background. Cut, copy, paste. The clipboard is disabled because we don't want information going out of Salesforce. Uh, and if it hits something like a URL, like the piratebay.org, somewhere we don't want people going, when it launches, we've got some URL filtering, right? We know that that's restricted. But there are other cases where the end user is going somewhere, hey, Instagram, for example, right? A lot of our employees today, they don't exist if every day isn't posted on Instagram. So we let them go to it. But we do it in a secured remote browser. You can tell by that little semicircle tab at the top of that browser window that that is a virtual session going into the Citrix cloud, running that browser off of your network and providing a secure experience. So there, in just a few seconds, you can see exactly what the workspace does for security. Right? It gives the end user a seamless experience. They don't have to think about different ways of accessing different applications. We know who they are. We know what device they're using. We know why they're trying to get at some certain information. And we just make policy decisions. We react with security capabilities. So when we introduced this last year, this was built around a cloud service and built for our cloud deployments. And so I'm happy to introduce to you today a new development where this access control capability is going to be available for hybrid as well, using your on-prem storefront and enabling you to manage and control uh, using the same infrastructure that you already have in place with your virtual apps and desktops infrastructure, providing a seamless on-ramp into this capability. So that means not only can you provide this type of control for those SaaS applications, but you can also now also secure your on-prem web apps as well. And so you'll have consistent policy enforcement, regardless whether that app is on-prem or it's coming from a cloud imp implementation. You'll have hybrid insights that go across that entire environment, integrated analytics that'll come and feed the uh, user behavior profiles, and of course, the frictionless, seamless experience for end users. That's not the only thing we're doing for security in the workspace. We're also introducing some brand new capabilities that expand the security policies available within it. So we're introducing two key new features, anti-key logging and screen capture protection. So if you follow any of the, the trade rags in this space, then you know that key logging has overtaken phishing as the number one way that hackers try to get your data. It's key logging now that you gotta be worried about. So this feature comes into the workspace at a very uh, timely moment. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Um, first off, let's look at what it looks like without this protection um, built into the workspace. Um, so on the, uh, the left-hand side there of your screen, you'll see that um, dark box, that is the hacker view, if you will, right? So that's um, the key logging software, um, uh, uh, receiving the information out of the workspace. 
And so the end user is just going in and typing something into their search bar um, in Salesforce, and you can see it comes across as clear text um, without these protection policies in place. And then they, maybe they go to a screen capture utility, the end user does this, and they try to take a screenshot of that Salesforce record, and it gets captured in that screenshot utility, pixel for pixel, right? Obviously, that's not ideal. That's not what we want. So here's what that same scenario looks like now um, with the new protection policies in place. So now when the end user goes and goes into their Salesforce screen and uh, starts typing in there, there we go. What comes across to the hacker is basically just garbage. Random characters spewed out while they're typing. And then when they go in, the end user tries to go and do a screenshot, you know, they use the same utility and drag across and make that rectangle. All they're gonna get is just a blank gray box. Right? Pretty cool, right? So right away, you can see how much uh, help this provides by building this into the workspace. Right? We're, we're creating policies that exist at a workspace level, not at an individual application level. And having this at the workspace level means that everything in your workspace is protected. So when I say everything, I mean authentication dialogues, your Citrix files and documents that get manifested there through the workspace. Those are protected by these capabilities. That entire notification feed, right? You see now there's a lot of valuable data that's gonna show up in that workspace. That's protected. All the micro apps and all the cards that slide out with those actions that end users can quickly take, that's protected. Of course, your virtual apps and desktops, the HDX sessions are all protected. And SaaS applications via the embedded browser um, or a virtual browser. Those are all protected by the same policies as well. So an application delivered via the workspace is more secure than delivered any other way. And end users are going to want to be secure because they're gonna want the, the end user experience, that intelligent experience. Now, another thing that really um, causes this issue between end user experience and security is when there's the, the false positive, right? when a security policy is triggered and, um, and it didn't really need to be. Uh, and it's sort of the situation of crying wolf, right? You get a little pitch, piece of the picture, you see a little bit of what's going on, you think, oh my God, that looks like a threat. Let me sh start shutting things down, right? The list of no's goes into place. Don't do this, don't do that. And if you only have that limited view, and you only get a small piece of the picture, it looks like a big threat. But if you had a little more information, you can pull out a little bit, you could realize oh, it's not a wolf at all, it's just a cute little puppy dog. Get even more information and a fuller sense of what the context is, and you realize that maybe you didn't realize what was happening at all, right? It's just a kid with a t-shirt playing on a playground. So having that information and being able to understand very broadly what's going on in the environment is extremely important to be able to build a security posture. And that's the reason that we're introducing analytics integration with a number of key partners in the industry. So Microsoft, building around their security graph, tons of information going in there. We're able to integrate, pass some information from Citrix to Microsoft and receive some risk um, flags from them as well. With Splunk, we're sending data out of our analytics um, into, into the Splunk environment. So if, if your SecOps is based on that and they're reading the dashboards from there, they get the additional information from Citrix. With Ping Identity, they're able to consume some of our user-based risk profiles and enhance their authentication policies and take action there. Let me dig a little bit more into uh, what it means in particular with this integration with Microsoft. So, Thinking about just the, the Citrix Analytics platform today, right? we've got about 100 million touch points with end users um, globally. We're collecting a lot of information, a lot of telemetry about how they're using applications, what device they're using them from, bringing that into the Citrix Analytics platform, and then we're able to actually enforce some policies and take some action on, uh, on the, the environment. 
making sure that end users are behaving well. Add our 100 million to about a 2 billion logins to the Microsoft cloud infrastructure. We get information from Azure, Azure AD, uh, advanced threat protection. All those resources become part of that data set where you get that broad picture of what's happening. And you get additional enforcement points across Office, across Azure. Right? So it really builds out that picture. I'm also happy to announce that while we're um, you know, building out all these analytics capabilities, we're taking these global as well. So coming soon, we're introducing Citrix Analytics will be available in Europe and Asia Pacific. And as we think about this security environment and, and this ecosystem of partners that we're, we're building around, you also need to be aware of what we're doing from a workspace security initiative with the Citrix Ready program to expand our capabilities to integrate with those partners, help protect those SaaS applications, web apps, Windows applications that go through the workspace, and over 30,000 solution partner uh, validations have already occurred through Citrix Ready. Right, so really expanding your security capabilities. So now I'd like to shift gears for a second and, um, and just talk about one of these industries that really is uh, born on balancing that experience and security. And that's healthcare. Right? Clinicians, they demand the best in their devices that they use, the applications that they use, because it means quality of patient care. It means productivity and the number of patients that they can see during a day. So that experience and that efficiency is extremely important. And what I'd like to do is invite to the stage um, a customer of ours, uh, a very special um, customer, Partners Healthcare. Um, Partners was founded in 1994 by Brigham and Women's Hospital and Massachusetts General Hospital. The provider network has grown significantly to include community and specialty hospitals, a managed care organization, a physician network, community health centers, home care, and other health-related uh, entities. Um, they're also the recipient of many awards. Um, certainly for being a top place to work, proving that they really understand that employee engagement and experience. Um, but they've also been recognized for being innovative in their use of information technology. Um, they've been using Citrix technology for a long time, um, and you know, they're starting to make that transition to cloud. They've been using our networking as well as our virtual apps and desktops to deliver electronic medical records to more than 35,000 concurrent users. And so um, here to talk a bit more about that and share some experiences. Uh, I'm very happy to invite to the stage Herb Harrison, Director of Information Systems at Partners Healthcare. Herb. Thanks for joining us, Herb. Thank you for having me. So, um, as I was teeing you up there, you know, you're supporting healthcare operations uh, and you have to manage that experience and security. So how do you go about doing that? How do you balance what it is the clinicians need with what the organization needs from a compliance and security perspective? That's going to continue to be a, a challenge, uh, not only in healthcare, but in any industry. And mostly because we have to stay ahead of the bad actors out there. So that means we're going to have to constantly look at the access of our applications, how that data is, is, is getting uh, delivered and making sure it's as secure as possible. Meanwhile, especially on the clinician side, they need faster and easier ways to access that data so they can deliver uh, better quality care. So with that in mind, uh, we engineered 2,000 applications uh, to be accessed uh, securely from our data center. Uh, where this has really helped the user experience is that the presentation layer using uh, Citrix's workspace has allowed us to give them the same consistent experience regardless of whether they are inside or outside of our network. Wow. So, um, you know, that organization now is more distributed than ever, right? And, and so you've got to um, provide those resources to, the, to all those different community centers and things that, that I just listed out. Um, so how are you managing that, that distribution of, of the healthcare practice? I think it's very similar to many of the other industries that has a distributed workforce. Uh, it's really about the workers, and the workers are distributed. So it's about now asking those workers, what is it that you need in order to be productive? And what we're hearing is that they want flexibility and choice. 
they want to be able to uh, be able to work the same way, regardless of what device they're on, uh, regardless of where they work, whether it's home or in the cafe, uh, in the office, or maybe even abroad. Uh, so leveraging uh, the 2,000 applications that we have do access in our data center, we have been able to present them uh, using Citrix work Workspace, the ability to now be able to uh, give them those applications anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Okay, awesome. So in addition to serving those people all, all over the, the, the different um, regional locations, I know you're also moving to cloud, so you're making that whole transition uh, up to cloud. Can you talk a little bit about your approach to how you're um, thinking about the cloud use case? Sure. The approach at Partners is really more of a uh, cloud-considered strategy. Uh, and what really, what that means is that we understand that the cloud isn't going away. We will embrace the cloud, but only when it makes sense uh, to our business needs. Uh, so uh, we will take it on a case-by-case -case basis as we have new initiatives come out. Okay. And um, I, I take it you've been investigating Citrix Cloud as well. We have investigated the Citrix Cloud, and we have definitely seen the value in being able to have the control plane that the workspace uh, solution uses uh, being delivered in the cloud. And as of right now, we have been able to uh, have 1,000 of those 2,000 applications that we have in our data center. 1,000 of those are now being launched uh, using the Citrix cloud uh, control plane. Wow, that's amazing. So I think you're truly exemplary of this idea of trying to balance experience with security as well as provide choice and choice in devices and locations. Um, Herb, I want to thank you for your partnership and, and for being such a great customer and, and for joining me here up on stage and telling your story. Thank you. Thanks, Herb. All right, so to close out this section, I want you to keep a few things in mind, right? Only from Citrix are you going to be able to get that terrific balance of experience, that intelligent experience now, with security as well. Balancing out choice so that you can use multiple clouds, different devices, different types of applications, and multiple analytics platforms, of course. We have the most comprehensive set of workspace protection policies, as you saw, extending that even further with anti-key logging and screen protection capabilities. And last, a full end-to-end -end analytics capability built into that workspace and available for use right now. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cal. So we've talked about experience. We've talked about security. And for the next few minutes, before we wrap up, we're going to talk about choice. Obviously, in our industry, this is a little bit of a buzzword. In fact, there's a lot of companies that say, we support choice, so long as it's choosing between one of the things that we want to sell you. At Citrix, of course, you know, we understand how important flexibility is, you know, especially as your infrastructure just changes year to year. And we recognize that you need the, the flexibility to choose really how and where you run your workloads based on factors like performance and cost and others. And of course, choice across device in the enterprise. So we're gonna spend the next few minutes digging into this and, and showing you some of the new solutions that we built to really help you make this a reality. And one partner that we're working very closely with here, of course, is Google. And so it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Rob Enslin, president of Google Cloud. Good morning, David. Good morning. Good How are you? Thank Good you. to see you. Good to be here. Thank you. Welcome, on the, welcome to the new job, and yeah. uh, thanks for making this the very first customer conference that you attend. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here at Synergy. Thank you. Awesome. So, hey, let's jump right in. Obviously, everybody in the world is familiar with Google, right? And everybody is familiar with Google Cloud. But I'm not sure everybody really understands the true scope and scale. So how should people be thinking about Google Cloud these days? Think about Google Cloud is big. You know, we are seeing momentum across multiple industries and sectors. If you just look at the, the media and entertainment industry, you'll see nine out of the top 10 companies use Google Cloud, seven out of the top 10 retail companies, six out of the top 10 energy and utility companies 
And we're seeing the same level of momentum in many more industries and enterprises. And it's an exciting time for us at Google, especially with some of the announcements we're going to make today with Citrix as well. So for many of you who know, I've recently just joined Google. And I can say from a fresh perspective, um, the technology is incredible. It's world-class infrastructure. And it is truly an amazing engineering company. And for those undergoing digital transformation, I believe Google can offer you an amazing partnership. So just on that same topic, um, a lot of customers are choosing Google Cloud these days. Talk to us about what's different. Yeah, when, you, when we talk to the world's enterprises about digital transformation, they talk about security, reliability, hybrid, AI, ML, smart analytics, and a few other things. But if you look at Google's core competencies, it puts us in a unique position to help solve these problems, and often in partnership with, uh, with leaders like yourselves at Citrix. If I break it down into a few categories, security and reliability, Google has this amazing, immense data center network, networks that travel around the world, under ocean sea cables that connect the data, and it's highly, highly available. And you can look at you know, any of the Gartner or crystallized technologies results to see that. The other thing which is also very unique with Google Cloud is the focus on hybrid and multi-cloud. So with Anthos, we truly let your applications run unmodified in an on-premise world or on any public cloud. And I would say with AI and ML, Google's recognized as one of the leaders with artificial intelligence and machine learning. If you look at smart analytics and big cloud, what we can do with massive amounts of data, and the platforms that we bring from other areas of Google, like Maps, Assistance, Voice, Chrome, Android, all into the picture, truly makes Google uniquely ready to help customers with digital transformation. Great stuff. So we've been partners for a long time. You know, tell yep. me why that's important for Google. Well, first I want to recognize the tremendous success Citrix has had in simplifying IT's everyday workplace and helping people become more productive and efficient in their jobs. You know, partnering with Citrix means we can bring these capabilities to Google Cloud, our customers, and embed Google's scale, infrastructure, and compute power in Citrix services. So fun fact, actually, uh, Citrix Intelligent Traffic Management is built on GCP. Yep. So we're both a partner as well as a customer of Google mm -hmm. Cloud. So we're stepping up our partnership, though, into Hyperdrive, because we've seen the volume of customers that are really looking to move their Citrix apps and desktop workloads to Google Cloud. So along with a deeper integration that we've been working on across the G Suite portfolio, and of course, Chrome and Android devices, we want to extend that, actually, by uh, really taking it to another, another level, a superior experience together. So that's why today I'm excited to announce that Citrix Workspace, with machine creation services, for automated VM provisioning on Google Cloud Platform is available on demand today. And it's gonna be rolled out to everybody by the third quarter of 2019. So it's a key technology for scaling virtual apps and desktops in the cloud. Yeah, so I'm delighted we can announce these new services today. Citrix is the leader in unified digital workspaces and bringing these solutions to Google Cloud has been a priority for us at Google. And this is, for the most important part, is a big win for our customers, our joint customers. Yeah, in fact, we're seeing a lot of uh, joint customers actually already signing up. We've got one of the world's largest renewable energy companies moving their Citrix apps and desktop workloads to Google Cloud right now. So Rob, as we think about looking a little bit more long term, if you can talk for a minute about you know, what you're most excited about for Google Cloud and how do partnerships like the one that we have between Citrix and Google really help drive that? Yes, I couldn't be more excited about the future for Google Cloud. You know, Google Cloud is taking a new approach to enterprise businesses. Our goal is to be the trusted enterprise cloud partner for Fortune 5000 companies as they transition to the cloud. We also want to be the easiest cloud to do business with, investing massively in more sales and distribution channels to meet customer demand, working on a number of operational improvements around pricing and contracting that'll make it easier for us to do business with. Mm -hmm. working with our partners in an open source ecosystem environment, doing much more technology partnerships to open that up, and introducing a new program for customer success that will focus on how we convert them from user to advocacy throughout the customer lifecycle. And our partnership with Citrix and the launch of 
workspace on Google Cloud is just another big step forward in that journey. And so we look forward to working with you, David, and even more on behalf of all of your customers and ours. Rob, thank you so much for being here with us. And as we work with all of our customers on digital transformation, we want to partner with the best, and that's Google Cloud. So I'm looking forward to the future of this partnership. And again, thanks so much for being here. Thank with you for us. having us. Thank you. Thank so, you, everybody. Let's bring PJ back out to cover all the great announcements we're making with Google now. So as David mentioned, we have uh, several initial announcements that I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about today between Citrix and Google Cloud. The first one that I want to spend a few moments is just talking about the G Suite integration into the Citrix workspace experience, where we're going to surface appropriately the notifications that come from G Suite's collaboration tools into the workspace so that they, that context is carried forward between uh, the collaboration tools and, and the individual workspace experience. Thank you. Uh, I'm also really pleased to announce uh, Citrix ADC high availability for Google Cloud. For customers who really want to move their workloads, especially their most mission critical workloads to, to Google Cloud, this provides a robust enterprise ready solution uh, for your networking on, uh, on Google. Uh, I also am really pleased to announce adding support for Google Identity into the Citrix workspace. For customers who have chosen to use uh, Google Identity inside their organization, or for those M&A or broader use case scenarios where you have mixed directories, we're now going to support Google Identity alongside the other enterprise-ready uh, identity services, identity providers. Uh, we already have support today for uh, Microsoft uh, Active Directory and Azure Active Directory, and with Okta, Ping, and Google all being delivered, uh, we now support the widest set of identity providers, all with multi-factor authentication. So this is really the definition of choice, uh, supporting what identity systems and identity investments customers have made. We also recognize that there are other significant investments that you've made in your organizations, whether it be your clouds or your hypervisors or other layers of infrastructure, and we continue to invest in and support each one of these. Uh, sometimes they merge in interesting ways, and uh, I'm delighted to announce that we are adding today uh, upcoming support for uh, Citrix virtual apps and desktops on VMware Cloud. So let's think for a few minutes about our friend Chris and what's actually happening as organizations are moving to these new infrastructures and these new clouds. In general, organizations are not lifting the current infrastructure and applications and just uh, moving them to the cloud. They're using it as an opportunity to rebuild, to reimagine, to rethink how they could leverage some of the great new capabilities in Azure or in Google, AWS, or the other public clouds. And so the apps at our core are getting rebuilt on these new cloud platforms. And uh, today, we all use applications that are cloud hosted that are beneficiaries of this much more modern, dynamic way of building applications. Let's take a specific example from um, Maria. Uh, Maria needs to update a photo for her professional uh, social network, and so she takes a selfie with her, uh, with her phone and uploads it to a cloud, uh, pretty standard as you would expect, where the, the photo will get stored. Um, but along the way, that photo will also probably be get geotagged by a separate application service that's running in that cloud. And in fact, a facial recognition algorithm rather, may also run against that photo. So instead of thinking about this as one application doing one thing, it's actually a collection of loosely coupled microservices all cooperating 
to deliver a much more integrated and complete uh, application. And so what was a monolithic application, if it had been written on-prem, now gets rewritten in the cloud as a series and a collection of microservices, application components and elements that need to be managed in a very, very different way to how you would have managed a traditional application. And so Chris, his infrastructure has gone from looking like this to, in reality, probably looking a little bit more like this. Cloud-hosted applications, some SaaS applications, maybe a private cloud that he's also hosted in, and the attendant network challenges associated with managing all of this. Well, at the same time, we've been working very hard on our Citrix SD-WAN and Citrix ADC products to provide networking capabilities that support Chris in this journey to the cloud and to this more diverse and heterogeneous network infrastructure. By the way, at the same time that those applications have been moving to the cloud, the clouds have in fact been moving back to on-premises implementations, Outpost, Azure Stack, and Anthos, all require modern networking also in addition to the cloud footprints. So in fact, this is much more likely to be the picture. What Chris really needs, though, is manageability and visibility and control that spans that infrastructure. And that's what he gets with Citrix ADM, a set of common tools that allow you to manage all the instances of Citrix networking across your entire deployment. When we think about delivering our networking services in this hybrid multi-cloud world, we do it with a view to actually accelerating your move to the cloud. We want to deliver the ADC functions that you need on whatever form factor matter to you. We want them to run on all the clouds. We want to give you license portability and flexibility about where you deploy them. We want to give you analytics and insight and machine learning that spans the entire portfolio. And today, I'm delighted to add a new member to this family the bare metal version of Citrix ADC, Citrix BLX. So this is the version of uh, our ADC software that you can run on whatever hardware you think is appropriate to match the performance characteristics of your workload. And now by adding this to the family, we offer you unmatched capabilities across the entire array of dedicated hardware, bring your own hardware solutions, virtualized image versions of networking or containerized versions with a common application deployment management system that sits in front providing analytics, visibility, and control across all of that. And not just did we uh, unify the form factors for delivery, we've also supported the widest array of licensing models from perpetual subscription and pooled and we build a set of technologies that support the widest set of traffic that you need to manage. So this really is a very comprehensive picture of helping customers adopt Citrix technology to accelerate their movement into a hybrid multi-cloud environment. But it's not just about networking. Really, the choices that you face often pivot around ecosystems. You know, earlier today, Brad and I walked through a fairly comprehensive picture of all the ways that we integrate with the Microsoft ecosystem, whether it's with the cloud, with the networks, with the devices, with the applications, with the identity, with the core infrastructure. But based on the announcements that we've just made with regard to Google, you could actually draw a very similar picture that shows our uh, partnership and our integration opportunities uh, with their uh, capabilities also. If only life were that simple, that it was two ecosystems that provided enterprise technology. The reality is that you're grappling with many more significant players who offer really terrific technology to you. But you have to turn somewhere for a platform that helps you integrate all of them. And the list well, it kind of goes on, depending on the nature of your business and the type of, of ecosystems that you, you interact with. Our perspective is that you shouldn't be limited 
in the choice of ecosystem that you choose to use. Citrix view is that we are that platform that unifies all of those ecosystems and brings them together and allows you to deliver a consistent experience, high quality experience to all your users, no matter what application or hardware or network or cloud you choose. This is at the heart of the promise that Citrix makes about delivering the future of work. And so to conclude this section on choice, I'd like to highlight a couple of things that I think are critically important. The first one is our single architecture for supporting that hybrid multi-cloud environment, allowing customers the flexibility and the control they need to deploy applications where they need to operate their business. The out-of-the-box connectors that we're delivering that connect to all of the applications in our ecosystem and our continued incredibly broad support for our uh, partners in the ecosystem who deliver solutions with us uh, to com comprehensively deliver the end-to-end -end experiences that you need to run your business. Thank you. The future. As you've just seen, the future isn't that far away. Citrix is a better way to work for Maria and all employees. With content and actions served up intelligently to guide her and simplified one-click windows for greater productivity, even on the go. Citrix removes the noise from Maria's day so she can do her best work. Meanwhile, Chris and the IT team benefit as well. Extending app performance ease of use and security everywhere work needs to get done. It's a workspace for all. All with simplified management, proactive insight and analytics, and greater flexibility and control. It's unified, secure, intelligent. This is how we work. This is Citrix. Thank you. One more shout out for some equal, please. So, as you've just heard today, the future is really coming at us fast from a lot of different dimensions. You know, I started the day talking about you know, how Citrix is working hard to really bridge, you know, people and technology together, making people more productive on their terms while increasing engagement across work. We're doing that by delivering a platform that covers all users and all application types, a platform that really helps regardless of whether they're power users or just that, you know, simple requirements of productivity and a couple of SaaS apps, a platform that adds value to everybody while again, allowing you to abstract out a lot of that complexity of segmenting people and viewing it all through a single pane of glass. And to deliver that, we explored Citrix really across these three big areas, workspace, networking, and analytics. In the workspace, we're innovating rapidly right now. We're infusing it with intelligence, enabling mobile productivity while expanding security at the same time. In analytics, we broaden the capabilities to include powerful performance analytics, you know, partner support, deep integrations, and widening availability around the world. And then, of course, in networking, you know, we continue to enable the broadest choice across ecosystems from great, great partners like Microsoft and Google. And we're expanding with new capabilities to give you even more choice and more flexibility across the infrastructure. I'd say, taken as a whole, you know, we're really firing on all cylinders right now, delivering the intelligent experience the integrated security, and really the unmatched choice that businesses like yours deserve. So, everything we've talked about today is available now or in the hands of our beta customers today. We'll be available throughout the year on a GA basis. We're doing this quickly because, frankly, we think the future is right now. So, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of Citrix Synergy 2019. Let's enjoy the show.